Greetings and welcome to a premier draft and the set is War of the Spark. So this is going to be, I think this has been draftable for one week already. It's going to be like for another one week and this is the first time I'm now drafting this format. I mean not, uh, I, I of course did draft this format a lot uh, two years ago. And of course I played traditional drafts then but uh, and this is just the best of one draft, but uh, it's the first time I'm drafting now uh, when it's now uh, available on March uh, 2021. Okay, so let's pick the Domri and Ark of Bolas. It's a it's an okay planeswalker, not the you know best one, but uh, the good cards in the pack is the even Eternal. It's okay, and um, I guess it's the common I would be picking here. And uh, I, I guess I should hover over the cards a little bit more if you are unfamiliar with them, but I'm actually running out of time. Out of the uncommons, something like a Cruel Celebrant could be okay, but the Domri is, I mean, it's a double color card, but I'm not really, it can still be a very nice one if you, I mean, I guess it is the best card in the pack if we don't care about the fact that it is actually harder to draft it because it requires uh, playing two colors. Um, Anyway, I pick that one, and you can read what it does. Has a nice passive, and and if you get the, you know the fight ability to do some value on the turn you played, that's already fine. If if the opponent get, gets to attack this, to uh, so that this dies, it, it's fine. Okay, Chandra's triumph is of course of course going to be the pick here. It is a two mana instant that deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls and well i guess if i have a chandra it can deal a five but uh, the three damage is completely enough for a instant speed a removal spell that costs only two mana there's not really any reason to even consider the other options here i'll pick that one here um okay this mo or however you say it its name is pretty nice uh, if you can get any counter on it it's gonna be oh, well, quite a big threat right away, and this format of course has a plus one plus one counter theme, and actually most formats nowadays do have that theme. And now I'm I'm wanting to draft green and red, and this is the best green or red card in the pack, so I'm easily picking this here. Uh, there's something like courage, courage and crisis, which I might be interested in having. Even the Iron Bali might be an okay one with the Mogu, but it's not really a very strong card. Storm the Citadel is a bad overrun. Uh, I'm not looking forward to picking this card, even if it comes to, back to me. Tamiya's Epiphany, definitely a very strong card, but I'm not gonna pick a. And the Kalos uh, Dismissal is also a good blue card, but the Mogu is the pick for me here. Um, okay, Bloom Hulk has to be the pick. 4 mana 4-4, four, four, not even a double caster, easy single caster in mana cost, and you get to proliferate when it enters the battlefield, so that's fantastic. The Arn Crop Invader um, is a pretty aggressive uh, card because it has first track only attacking, but it's going to be very hard for the opponent to block because you have the threat of activation. Uh, this can be a 4 power first striker if you sacrifice one of your, you know, less impressive creature. So this is nice in aggressive decks, but the Bloom Hulk is obviously the pick here. It's just, a, it's I think that might be the best green common in this set, if I recall correctly. No reason to deviate from the colors here. And uh, okay, there's a Khan's Bastion. Hmm. Bolt Bend is um, funny, but um, I think it's more like a sideboard card. More like a sideboard card in, in uh, best of three, which this format is not, so not caring about that. Goblin Assault Team, <laughs> not really that great for mana, for a one toughness creature. Crawl Stinger is fine. I think I might actually, I don't usually like to play colorless producing lands, but this could be just my 18th land. This proliferate can be very good if I just find, you know, actual ways to put counters on my guys. Hopefully better ones than this. But I'm gonna take the Bastion in here because the other alternatives aren't really that great here. Single combat. So what's this thing? Oh, this is that one. Not a very good rat variant. Don't care about this thing at all. There's a hot fire for my colors. This, by the way... 
This very good white card. Yeah, this is very good white card, but I'm not sure if I... I mean, I could pick it here. There's like a Blind Blast and Mana Geode. Heartfire. The Arboreal Grazer isn't very good. It could be the Heartfire if I find some fodder creatures to sacrifice for this. Or it could be the Trusted Pegasus, but maybe I'll just, you know, let the white cards go and I will just stick to green uh, red here after all. Okay, Crunch uh, Wrangler will be pretty nice. Um, what is this up, Nicholas? Nicholas is cruel to doing it. This is the premium of black removal common spell here. It's pick number seven. This is an absolutely a first pick quality card. And it's pick seven here. Well, I mean, I'm not going to start splashing because this Crunch Wrangler is the best in the uh, red-green deck because I will have uh, the most options for four power creatures in this archetype. So I'm definitely taking this. Also works with the proliferate plan very nicely. Uh, return to nature. Uh, I don't think I want to play this in this format. There's not a lot of these artifacts or enchantments or exiling cards from graveyard. This isn't really that relevant to, and this is a best of one format. So I don't think I'm going to pick it. I'll just take the uncommon. Who knows? Maybe I will end up playing some black and this point of revival is a card you could consider playing. Right. So the Sarkhan's Catharsis isn't very good because it's missing the... <laughs> text the target creature so this this does only act as a finisher in a very aggressive deck so i don't care about this and uh, this is a cheap trick and sometimes you maybe even want to haste up some of your guys but i think this deck maybe doesn't care about it i'll just take the center nurture it's not a good card in this kind of deck when i'm actually looking to get you know more of those four power creatures for the crunch wrangler but if i end up splashing something uh, this does add any any mana mana of any color so this could be relevant in that case new horizons also works with the proliferate plan if i want to splash if i want to accelerate uh, this is just not very good for mana two three flyer isn't good enough and i'm not gonna um, these are the blue big guy and the black creature web decent but nothing that i'm too excited about i think i'm going to take the iron bully now bully now sorry not bully iron bully um it's not great but if i have i mean i have already one proliferate creature and i have the Khan's bastion and this will become better if you have proliferate in a deck uh, okay this is pretty nice black card at the formula 3-2, so if you don't know what the MS does, it actually, basically what this does, it creates a 2-2 uh, zombie army token, unless you have an existing zombie army token, and it will uh, give plus 2, plus 2 to that army. Um, okay, let's just pick these cards away. So the point is that this is a pretty nice card in black decks, and I guess I still have the option to go to green-black in here, but I would ideally uh, just play green red although there's an up nixilis is cruelty here but there is also a spark harvest which is i mean this is the better card both are good black removal spells yeah this format has two nice common black removal spells and then there's the not so good two mana that deals two or two a creature and you gain two life anyway i could take the up nixilis is <laughs> cruelty here but there's a plain white plain white celebration and this is pretty nice for a seven mana sorcery I mean, you can do four two two citizens or you know well i mean you can do a lot of stuff i'm definitely picking this this proliferate can be relevant gaining life is of course relevant in a race situation and i have already have a new horizon so i have some acceleration to um, you know make make it slightly easier to actually get to play these seven mana cards okay this could be actually my third up nixilis is cruelty <laughs> if i did pick the first one I don't actually remember what I picked over it in the pack one when it came as pick number seven, but I could go really deep with this thing. But anyway, there, there are two good cards for the black and uh, sorry, the green red archetype. Arlene, voice of the pack, is pretty nice. Six mana, uh, six mana planeswalker that basically can create you three, uh, two, two, so, so, sorry, three, three creatures. I think I'm gonna pick it. Oh, this is also very nice. This got a land card. Yeah, this is very strong too. Oh man, I have to take this. I kind of forgot how good this is. You can actually deal two damage to any target by just getting rid of your lands. Okay, I'll take the Living Twister, but I really would have taken, like to take that uh, a six drop Planeswalker too. 
Um, okay, Samut is not really, I mean, it's it's okay in a very aggressive deck, which this is not, and Band Together is a very nice removal spell. So basically two of your creatures bite uh, one of the opponent's creatures, and uh, it's an instant speed, three mana trick. So definitely easily to pick here. Vivian's Arcbow is pretty, I mean the Raging Crunch would be pretty nice, if, especially if I get to uh, pick more of these Crunch Wranglers. And I suppose, well I have some 3 drops here, but I, I can't just, you know, n not pick this. This is just insane, because you can do this at, you know, instant speed, so opponent attacks into my open mana when I have the Arcbow here. They don't even know if their attacks are gonna be good or not, because I might just get some surprise blocker that eats one of the attackers. This is an insanely good card, so I will pick that. Okay, the Pollen Bright uh, Druid will be picked. By the way, the Eternal Skylord is one of the best Amas creatures uh, in the set, but I don't think I'm gonna go for any kind of splash here. I'll take the Pollen Bright Druid. It helps with my kind of plus one plus one counter theme a bit. The Thundering Ceratok is fine. 5.45 but I don't really need to pick it. The Pollen Bright uh, Druid will be a nice pickup here. I also think I need some early early uh, drops here anyway. Um, this is a 3 mana 2 3 yes, and if it's going, I mean, if there's a ground style, yeah, you can get some advantage out of this card, but I would just take the Raging Crunch over it. But the question is, do I want to have the Grim Initiate? The Amas ability has some synergy with my Proliferate, but I think the Raging Crunch is slightly better. This can always, by the way, block alone. This, un this only can't attack alone, so this is a good blocker anyway. Okay, Paradise Druid, easily to pick here. Um, well, I mean, two mana, two one that <laughs> adds any mana, any color of mana, it's just a fantastic pick up here, so let's not even consider anything else. A Burning Prophet, not great. Another Center Nurture, I suppose. I'm not going to play either of these. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna play either of this, so let's take the four drop maybe. A bind blast. This hexproof crocodile is it's a five drop with three toughness that I don't like. I could take the new horizons here still. And this can do some you know, it's a kind of a trick, but uh not a very exciting one. I think I'll try to have the new horizons. I try to have my proliferate team uh, you know, work here. Uh, now I might actually take the crocodile because it just occurred to me that this is actually quite nice with the new horizons and the proliferate teams when you get can pump this guy's uh, toughness higher it, it will be actually a playable card uh, this is very nice uh, so i guess no one is well, i guess no one is really green because i have so many green cards here but this is a very nice card in a green black deck i don't think i mean <sighs> Okay, I'll take the, by the way, rather than take the New Horizons number three, I will take the Seratok now here. But um, I guess I had the opportunity to just really go green-black in here. But when I picked the Living Twister there as the first pick in this pack, or was it the first or second, or whatever it was, I kind of locked myself into green, uh, red here. It's a double caster red card. Okay, this is actually a tough, tough one, but I think it is the Jaya's greeting because this is another uh, two mana instant speed, uh, three damage to a creature, and I don't have really that much removal here. Bloom Hulk would be otherwise the pick here, but I'll take the uh, red removal. Yeah, I really would want to have the Bloom Hulk. I actually have some plus one plus one counter synergy here, so that would be really nice. Okay, I'll take this, and you can read it. <laughs> That's pretty nice instant speed trick. So basically, at six mana, uh, you just you know surprise one of their uh, attackers with a nine nine, a blocker, and then you just go to town when you start attacking with it. This is pretty insane. It, I mean, it is in theory a five mana card, but basically you want to usually play this at six mana. But I mean, sometimes you just play this at five mana at the end of your opponent's turn, and then you start attacking with the five, uh, nine nine. That's a crazy card. That's a crazy card. Um, okay, there is. This is again something that is fine in a uh, 
aggressive deck, but this isn't really, this is more like a late game deck with all the mana acceleration and these heavy hitters here, so I'm not going to play the Nahiris Stoneblade. Uh, am I gonna play the Chain Whip Cyclops? I don't think so. It's not really that amazing in this deck. I'll take the 20 gems here, that's what I do. Okay, Tibalt is actually nice. So I, I will let you read it. You get these uh, devils that can be pretty annoying for the opponent and it's just... Um, I mean, in this deck I mostly just want to, you know, survive to the late game. And this is helping in that department. I don't think I need another 5 drop here. This is fine too, but I think Tibalt is a little bit better, so I'll take the Tibalt here. Also, it's better than the Pyro Helix, in my opinion. This will be devilishly fun. Okay, so Nisa's Triumph. Mm, two forests. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst idea, because I have these heavy hitters and Khan's Bastion wants me to have a lot of mana available. But is it the card I'm willing to play here? It's also a double caster. Primordial Worm, though, it's not really exciting, but it could be. I have a couple of New Horizons, so maybe I want to have one of these. I mean, it's no Colossal Dreadmore, because it lacks Tramble, but the additional power doesn't really make up for it. But this format, of course, doesn't have the Colossal Dreadmore, so this is the best thing I have. I guess I'll take it, and maybe I'll play it, maybe not. Alright, so I have two of these guys already, so I'll just take the Blind Blast. Maybe I'll play it. One damage, draw a card. It's something I could consider, but it's pretty unlikely. Okay, uh, Crunch Wrangler is the pick here. I don't know, I don't have a ton of four power creatures, but I have enough to make this guy good. And uh, even if you get one counter, it's already nice. Two mana, three, two. Uh, Giant Growth is a fine trick. I wouldn't mind having it, access to it, but I'm going to take the creature over that trick now. Um, So, Guild Globe. I don't need to splash anything. I'm not going to play this kind of... A, Effect here. I guess I'll take the Cyclops just in case I feel it's necessary to play it. Uh, whatever, I'll take the Uncommon here. And uh, Snare Spinner is actually good against. Um, look at this, it is a 3 3 when it blocks flyers, so definitely a card I'm interested in having here. Alright, Uncommon away. And I guess this is pretty much it. None of this matters anymore. Okay, I did pick a couple of rares apparently here. Well, that's already kind of worth one win in this event. Um, okay, this one Nurturer, I guess. I'm not gonna play two of them and I still have cuts to make, so I can leave all this stuff in the sideboard. And uh, let's cut the lands for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to... I don't think I'm going to play now 18 lands because I have two New Horizons and I will play both of them. Uh, so Khan's Bastion will be my land number. A land number uh, 17. Um, and now I cut the black cards, which I wasn't gonna play. I have enough here, right? It's mostly green deck, but I, the red cards I have Domri, Living Twister, uh, these removal spells. And well, I mean, the Raging Grunt is quite nice with the Grunt Wrangler. So let's check before I make any cuts. Uh, is this the power? Oh no, there's some. Oh, I need to check the. Let me see. Okay, parked power. And what was the, uh, the? Okay, so he. So okay, so it's. No, come on. Like. This is what I want to see now. So I want to see how many things uh, trigger the Crunch Wrangler, and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six things. So I think I might play this chain whip. Cyclops, although this thing is a very expensive drop too. I mean, I'd rather play the Watch Gale Crocodile. I mean, this is enough hits for the... What's the num number of creatures? 15, so I don't think I want to lose too many creatures here, but... Well, I guess, I guess this is basically a creature. And Vivian's Arkbow, a creature with... I mean, yeah, this needs usually quite a bit of mana to make it a reliable thing, but... Uh, you can still ditch your extra lands to try to find a creature. I think I'm going to play the Arc Bow here. Um, so I'm just considering the Chain Whip Cyclops. I guess with the double New Horizons, it's not so bad to play these five drops. I can go into turn four, five drop with these things. So 
let's see if I can. And I would also with the Crunch Wranglers, I kind of am interested in, uh, you know, having all the four, four plus power creatures that is possible to have. So let's see, this is the creature curve now. So one, two, three, four, five, two drops, three, three drops. Yeah, the nurturer. I think I can forget about this. I mean, gaining the three life can be fine, but uh, I have to cut some cards. I'm gonna cut the blind blast for sure. And then it starts to be a bit harder after that. It's gonna be the nurturer for sure. Uh, but that still leaves me a bunch of cuts. Hmm. This is difficult. Maybe it's the Arkbow after all. I mean... I said it's... Did I say it's a sick rare or something like that? But... Uh, it's mostly good when you have already like 6 mana available. And I'm just thinking that this deck usually... When, you, when I have 6 mana available, I could have Khan's Bastion. I could have... A, these expensive stuff here. Maybe I just don't need to run this kind of a non non board affecting early drop here. I mean it is good but I think in this deck I will leave it out. And then the question is do I want to play the hard fire because this requires me to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker as an additional cost. I mean I guess I could use the pollen bright druid to proliferate or give the counter to something else and then it will be nice food for a sacrifice and of course this works against uh, when opponent is trying to remove one of your guys you can just sacrifice it in response and get some value out of it but hmm. well i can sacrifice tibalt and the domri too for it when they have kind of have used up their usefulness maybe i'll play the hard fire it's also any target, so you can actually uh, finish the opponent with this four damage, uh, four damage to face, which can sometimes be quite relevant. Now, I am bully usually isn't good, but I have those proliferate things here. I think I am actually going to play. Plus, giving the counter to Mo could be nice. Then I'm just left with a one-one menace guy, but I suppose I can eat it with the hard fire. So this is not re really a um, question of what is the final cut. I mean it kind of feels like the chain whip Cyclops is going to have to beat. 5 mana 4 4 isn't really that amazing. Yeah, I guess I'll just cut that. I like the T-Balt here. I want to have this early game available and then I can do fun stuff later in the game. So this is now um, 7 <laughs> red cards, 17 green cards. Uh, I have this double caster, but I have two of these new horizons. Uh, but I do want to have access to red mana early in the game to be able to play this stuff. So, so the Khan's Bastion is going to be played. And I suppose uh, it's going to be like seven mountains. I mean, it can't really be more at least because I want to play nine forests for sure. Because I can't ever keep a hand without uh, green mana here, I don't think. Hmm. I use the board of the Sparks land here. So it's gonna be either 6 or... I mean I would kind of like to play 10 Forest in here. Because with the New Horizons and also the Paradise Druid I do have here red sources. And also Domri can add me red. So I don't think the Living Twister... I don't need to have a, that many mountains to enable playing that. Yeah, I want to play 10 forests here to kind of guarantee that I always have a, always have um, a green mana in my starting hand. So let's put these 10 forests in here. And this is the deck. Best of one event. Let's see how it goes. No sideboarding. Well, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, let's say if the opponent doesn't have interaction, I have a Crunch Wrangler turn 2, turn 3, I make it a 3 
uh, two and turn four it gets the counter from the bloom hulk and the proliferate from it as well it's gonna be a five four oh that is nice too but um actually how deep i want to go here i can get some additional value from the proliferate here actually if i go for the druid then give the druid to counter and then i play yeah you know what i'm actually gonna do it i'm not gonna play the bloom hulk next turn because i do want to get the value from the proliferate mm, let's see if i get to attack with this i mean it loses its hex proof if i attack with it but uh, well i'm not gonna attack with it now so um I'm gonna have the. Okay, by the way, I kind of made. A... I can do this even better. Just realize this uh, does add mana. So, <laughs> yeah, let's do it like this. And hope the opponent doesn't get to kill the druid because now my next turn will be pretty great. Uh, the Bloom Hulk will proliferate for both of these guys. And at least it will uh, proliferate the Crunch Wrangler, uh, even if they get to kill it. They could have the thing that, okay, the thing that you know makes two of your guys fight, fight a, uh, uh, one of the uh, not fight but you know bite the opponent, some one of the opponent's creatures. Either way, uh, this is now just pretty nice. I'll just stack the triggers exactly like this. First, the Quella Wrangler gets a counter, and then. I get to proliferate here. And then next turn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I can actually play White Celebration on turn 5 and do a bunch of decent stuff. So definitely not going to offer the attack at the trade on these things. And I want to proliferate uh, at least once here, probably even more. We will see. Turn target permanent card, alright. So let's see. Proliferate at least once. Do I need those two twos? I mean, they are kind of okay against them. I don't think I want to proliferate too many times, but... Uh... Okay, so six, six, five. I guess if I make them six toughness, yeah, you know what? Three proliferate and one citizen here. And... Uh... Because I don't actually remember the, I don't remember the uh, tricks in this format, so I just you know play and they have whatever they have. Of course, I kind of ran out of my choice here by drawing all these lands, but well, it's not even that many lands. One, two, three, four, five, six lands and five spells. So they have, they can have at least giant growth. Or and uh, was the the trick that gives first strike and a plus one plus one counter? I think that's a thing too. Yeah, they can be, if, I'm, if I recall correctly, target creature gets first strike and a plus one plus one counter. I mean, first strike until end of turn. I'm not sure. But I mean, this block kind of indicates they have exactly that. Could be just a giant growth. Okay, that's fine. At least they don't get any permanent buff in there. Now, this requires attacking with two other creatures. So... My 7-6s will be quite... Okay, well that's not... That was a good combination. Well, I have the Pradas Druid here still. Let's see if they can answer... If they can answer the Druid, I mean, I'm in a bad shape because they have 5 cards in their hand. They have been missing their land drops. So, um, this was kind of an all-in plan. It was sad that they had 3 mana available and they were able to deal profitably with 2 of my guys only using those 3 mana. So, uh... Yeah, things can go pretty bad here if they have... If I draw more... Okay, New Horizons. So they have here 8 power. I mean, they can't block with... But this is not a very good card. I mean, they, they, they will lose counters for each damage they take. But the problem here is that if I play the New Horizons and give the Paradise Druid the 7th point of toughness, uh, they, they could triple block it still. But problem here is that... Uh, 
they still have four cards to my one, two, two here. So. But I think I have to do it. It feels like I have to do it because how else am I going to win here? If I just attack with the Druid now, I mean, I can attack with these. If they block with the Conjurer and it's going to be a 1-1, one, one, but I mean, they're going to play more creatures and be able to. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is just something I have to do here. Yeah, this is not great. But I feel like I forced them to make the triple block and then I can attack with the 2-2 two, two as well. I mean, they can jump block too, which is fine, but... They can kill a 2-2 two, two with the Conjurant, but then it becomes a 1-1, one, one, so... I mean, I kinda... Yeah, they take the damage here, and... If they have a way to deal with the Paradise Root... Now they can attack with all of their guys, and uh, this gets a counter, but I mean, they're not gonna raise me quite yet. <laughs> but if they can kill the druid, that's it. Now I have the 145 in my deck which says that it's 5 mana 45 which gives uh, your creatures tremble until end of turn as enters the battlefield effect. So this would make their jump blocks uh, much worse if I were able to draw that. But I really do need to draw uh, now my spells. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lands and six spells and two of my spells have been these mana producers so I have only four spells here that I actually well I mean I guess this I did affect the board with the, in the with the plus one plus one counter but I'm not confident at all here iron belly okay so are they going to well, if they're gonna attack they're gonna okay they go for the jump blocks here so now if I win if I get the Trample to my guys, otherwise I might just be losing. Oh, that is just bad. So, I can just lose next turn. Look at this. All these lands made me lose now. <laughs> yeah, all they need is like a jump blockers and I need to draw my trample giving 4-5. Oh, I basically needed just a blocker here too. Yeah, okay, they gain life here. Well, that was it. That was it. Not a good start to this event. I mean, I'm gonna drop... Dropped even more rank here now. They don't have to fight, right? Do they? Up to. Yeah, I don't know why they fought there, but... Well, this is the thing. I needed this guy on the previous turn. Oh man, that's so bad. If I did draw this on the previous turn, I would have won. And I would have won here too if I... No, it's actually enough that they jump block with the Conjurant here. Oh, this is so bad. Because I'm losing to their attack. They have here enough power. I mean, I can block the two biggest guys and they still deal three, four to me total. If I attack with this thing, they can just, you know, kind of jump with the Conjurant. Go to one. So this Tolsimir was very relevant that they gave. They got three life from it. Uh, I mean, I can do this, but <laughs> one turn too late. Great. Where was my removal? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, this was just a. Uh... Well, I flooded out here. Did it even get the Khan's Bastion? That would have been at least some a land that did something. So now they can attack with all, and uh, I don't even. I mean, they are gonna attack with all. Why? Why wouldn't they? All right, and this is now me, <laughs> 200 sort of, uh, rank spot. So actually I have to really go, like, uh, get a lot more wins than losses to get back to where I started from. But that was disappointing, uh, you know, a sequence of land draws in there. Well, I have a lot of early plays. This is, of course, no early play when because it requires other thing than just mana. Uh, I'm on the draw. I suppose I keep it. I mean, at least I have the Mo and then this coming up at some point.
Well, that's a three drop at least. That I don't care about. I don't have flyers. Okay, so the new horizons with the mobile will be good. This will become a 5-5. Five five. Because whenever this gets a counter, it will get one extra. So hopefully opponent doesn't have a bounce or a removal on that thing. This is just going to be a 2-2 two -two menace for now, un until I draw something with proliferate. Vivian's Grizzly, okay. Well, there's something with proliferate. But my game plan here is going to be like more like a long-term game plan of playing the Moo and then the Horizons and then the Bloom Hulk. Unless I really need a 4-4 blocker now, then I have to just go with this thing. Um, yeah, if you kill it, you kill it with some trick. I don't care. Okay, they had the Bloom Hulk there, but... Uh, so let's see how my mana would work here. Uh, I mean, I couldn't just play the Bloom Hulk and have a 3-3 three, three menace guy and trade with the Bloom Hulk unless they have a trick. Or I can play the Mowu right now and next turn I can play my fifth land and the horizons, but that leaves me only three mana and I can't go for the Bloom Hulk right away. How much damage I can take here? I mean, I guess the move means that... Okay, I go for the long, long game plan here. I, I mean, I'm not going to even attack with the Bali here. I think I have the long... I should win the long game and the two damage isn't going to matter. Maybe I don't win it, but I mean... In this board position, racing doesn't seem very relevant. And that... Ah, that was hugely... Nasty setback, but... What can you do? Oh man, that, that was just bad. Win. Okay, and this says I will gladly point out your uh, instant artifact sorceries are more expensive. Uh, this can be quite awkward here. I mean, I guess I can play the living twister, it will block the 4 4 here. Can't even leave the hot fire up because I. I know I could play the New Horizons and then, you know, the Living Twister, but I would lose the counter on this thing. Maybe I'll just uh, play the Mo here still and hope they don't have anything. I mean, I will take a bunch of damage here, but... I mean, I try to win the game, not just survive. That can... Okay, so this has to be killed, this flyer here. I mean, opponent's curve here is just so amazing. So this won't deal any damage, right? This can only jump block. I mean, not jump block, but you know, block without killing anything. So I'm taking 7 damage here. I need to use the hard fire there. This has vigilance though. I can attack the. No, it is only your next turn. Oh my, this eternal Skylord. I mean, I can't beat if the opponents have this kind of curves here. That is just too much with the Colos dismissal too. Get one of my blockers. Well, I'm not gonna jump block here. I can't kill anything. Yeah, the Dovin here is so good. <laughs> well, band together. This won't deal anything. And it's also costing one more thanks to Dovin here. This costs one more. Oh man. So let's see, I, I will take 3 damage from here and I have only... No, I will actually lose here. I can play the New Horizons and the Living Twister after that. And I will have 3 blockers to therefore ground attackers and this will drop me to 1. And I don't have the mana to use. I can't play the heart fire for this thing. I need to kill the heart fire with this thing with heart fire, but uh, then I don't have any uh, other play available. Hmm. 
No, I don't. That's it. I'm just losing to this board here now. <laughs> Eternal Skylord. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm at 02 here. Well, that started well. I mean, I don't think this deck is bad, but I mean, first game, I basically just flooded out. This game opponent had a perfect curve and they were on the play. So not really chance in there. Because I didn't have one of my many two drops. I have a two burn spell two drops and I have a creature two drops in here. I just didn't have them. <laughs> and here is the starting hand which has two lands and yes I have a two drop but I would need to draw specifically a mountain here so I have to mulligan this and at least it is better but let's see I mean this I have only one creature here a 3-2 won't be winning the game here. I need to uh, get some of my big hitters here. Let's see opponent having now some <laughs> removal on this thing if they... What, what the heck? Hey, wh oh man. Ah, oh, what an auto tapper. I wanted to trap tap my druid because they wanted Chandra's Triumph to be available here. I mean, I guess it's okay if I... If they have something I can remove, but I definitely wanted to attack for three in there. To any target, right? Sure. Yeah, I still would have rather, you know, attack them to three there and land. So yeah, they, I mean, they would be at 14 now and I would now be able to play the Chandra's Triumph because I drew nothing. Wow, if I... Is this gonna be an O3? Oh, and that gonna kill me. I didn't start this fight, but I will finish it. Well, this was a punishing I event. I mean, now I have to be very lucky to to. Uh... At least this guy has vigilance, so they tapped. He still damage to tapped creatures, but um, if they have anything on the mow here, or any blocker here like that. I am no uh, I don't know what to say here. <laughs> wow. I mean that that was like three matches compl I mean the second second one was kinda okay, but opponent just had a perfect curve, but the first and second one um, first and third one, these are just non games. And opponent has like this kind of stuff when I'm drawing lands. So I mean this was just a failure. Ah <sighs> All right, all right. Yeah, that's not really enough. That's not enough at all. I can fight with this thing and I'll, I will lose the mo here. It will give me a 4-3, but I would have to, needed to get something that gives it a counter. Then I could have attacked the Nahiri and maybe have some chance, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely be playing, playing more. Um, now I actually have to actively play more premier drafts to, you know, rank up. But this was just a... How can the event be so disappointing? But this is, of course, the best of one magic. You have two out of your three games are mana floods and uh, that's it. Then you lose one game like in a normal way. And that's it. All right, claim the price of one pack. Right, well, I mean, like I have said always, I will upload all of my drafts. This will be a, for all of you to <laughs> see that even though I sometimes have some good run of drafts, sometimes I can have these kind of these kind of results too. And uh, 
uh, that is it for, for this draft. I will see you next time. It will be a traditional draft of Kaldheim, but I will have a premier draft of War of the Spark coming up too after that. Thank you for watching and bye bye.